Carlos, Carson, California. Carlos, it says here you disagree with me. About what? Gun control. Listen. Okay. Gun control makes people vulnerable to government control, government dictatorship. Let me, let me cite you a few historical examples. Paul Pot in Cambodia confiscated guns before he went on to kill 2 million Cambodians. And I met a lot of Cambodians here in Long Beach, California, who tell me the horror stories. Yeah, there Amin were very few guns in, in Cambodia, Carlos, and Pol Pot uh, no, didn't listen, actually listen, start listen, with listen. gun owners. He started with people who were educated. The first people of Pol Pot rounded up were people who wore glasses. If you know how to read, you were in trouble in Cambodia. Pol Pot tried to do what the French Revolution tried to do in the 1790s. He reset the calendar at the year zero. He, he uh, declared himself the founder of the Cambodian race. Uh, I put that in quotes. Um, I mean, it go, it, this has nothing to do with gun control whatsoever. And I don't know where you're pulling, you know, what weird little corner of the Internet you're pulling that from. But it's BS. Next example. Idi Amin confiscated guns before he went on to kill three, three guns. He, he did not, Carlos. Carlos, in 1979 and 1980, I worked in Uganda during the Civil War. I was, I was running or helping run a refugee camp in Mbali in Uganda. We had 10,000 people from the Ketamoja tribe just north of there who were starving to death as a result of what happened there. There were no guns to begin with. The, Ket the Ketamajong were, were nomadic people who principally drank blood and milk from their cattle. They did not have guns. They did not have a military. And, and it wasn't Idi Amin, by the way, who, who took over the country and slaughtered people. It was, it was the, uh, the Tanzanians to the south who invaded the country to kick out Idi Amin. And it was when Idi Amin's men fled through the north, and I was there a month after this happened, and it was when Idi Amin's men fled through the north, they raped every woman they could find, they killed as many of the men as they could, the vast majority of the people that we had in the camp that we were running with the Red Cross and the woman with the Red Cross who was actually running the camp, her name was Ann. She was an Irish Red Cross nurse. She was shot in the head a week after I left by a sniper. Um, but those, those, those people were, that was Idi Amin's army. A civilian population, no matter how well armed it is, cannot stand up to an army. They, the, the Jews in Poland couldn't stand up to the Wehrmacht. The, the Karamajong in, in, in Uganda could not stand up to, to Amin's army when they were fleeing, by the way. Amin's army couldn't stand up to the Tanzanians who were better armed. Um, the, the Cambodians couldn't stand up to Pol Pot's army. You will never find an example, to the best of my knowledge, where, uh, where a, 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 quote, armed populace. I mean, it, it, you had people try it in the United States. You look up Bacon's Rebellion sometime. It was poor whites and blacks who got together and said, okay, we're going to take on George Washington's army. Um, you, you can't find an example of people using guns to stop a, quote, tyrannical government. It doesn't work. You want to stop a tyrannical government? Stop it from being tyrannical. You have to use political means. All you do when you distribute massive numbers of guns among the people is you have massive numbers of suicides, childhood deaths, accidental deaths, mass murders, and, and people committing multiple homicides with guns instead of singular homicides with knives. Carlos, you're, 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 you're living and breathing a fantasy world. Not only that, none of the founders ever, you will not find a single reference anywhere in the founding documents of this country to the Second Amendment being there so that we could fight a tyrannical government. Never, never, ever. The Second Amendment was there for two reasons. Number one, because there was a huge debate among the founders about whether we should even have an army during time of peace. They thought the state militias, like, like, Switzerland, like Switzerland did up until just the last 20 years, like they did for hundreds of years, the cantons should be, uh, the, the states should be armed. Or, or, and, they wanted to protect the slave patrols in Georgia, South Carolina, and Virginia. Carlos, back to you. Okay. Hitler confiscated guns also. They serve as deterrents. No. 
at least Hitler actually Hitler actually passed out guns, Carlos. Hitler started the Hitler Youth Program. I I, I'm forgetting the name. Of, I lived in Germany for a year, Carlos. I knew a bunch of these Nazis. I, you know, I read the rise and fall of the Third Reich. I, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, Hitler started a program called the Hitler Youth. And one of the major things of the Hitler Youth was teaching gunsman, gunmanship, firing, how to fire guns. Hitler was arming people. The only, the only exception was you couldn't get armed if you were, if you had been identified. And this was all post-1934. You couldn't get armed if you were, if you had been identified as a communist or a Jew. And, and, but at that, I mean, you had people in the, in the Warsaw ghetto who tried to fight back against the Nazis with weapons and the Wehrmacht came in with tanks, with machine guns, with belt machine guns that would fire 50, a hundred rounds at a time. Um, and, and just mowed them down. You, you know, these, these examples, Carlos, these are pathetic. These are, these are the kind of pathetic made up stories that, that, you know, some 17 year old. You know, in fact, it was a 17 year old. Back in 1974, there was an article in The Rifleman, which was the NRA's magazine, that was the first time that anybody can document that anybody made a serious argument in any publication in the United States that the founders of the United States wanted uh, the Second Amendment so that people could fight against a tyrannical government. It was a lie then. It got adopted by the NRA. It's being promoted by the by the weapons manufacturers and and the and their very well paid toadies in the Republican Party. But it was a lie then, and it's a lie now. Listen, I rather I'm have listening. my guns when the progressive communist revolutions break out, and you got all these vandals trying to come into my home, trying to take it over. Man, during the well, that's riot, a whole completely many- issue, Carlos. You know, okay. if I, like I said, I, you know, I started this rant. There's a, you know, there's a guy who has broken into two houses in, you know, not in my immediate neighborhood, but within three blocks of, of where I live. Uh, and in one of those houses, there was somebody home. Yeah, I, you know, I can see having a gun for self-defense. I'm not opposed to that. But, th- th- you know, that's a whole different thing from these people who are, who are, you know, piling up 15 AR-15s in their back room and, and 5,000 rounds of ammunition because they think somehow they're going to heroically stop the government from Joe Biden giving everybody health insurance. All these gradual gun, confis- uh, gun legislation will eventually lead to total gun confiscation. Look, look what know? happens in Chicago. In Chicago, the outlaws have the guns. And that that's the murder rate capital of the girl of the world by guns and guns are allowed there. In Chicago, the it's outlaws like, have the guns because in Indiana, right across the border, five minutes across the border. In fact, the vast majority of the guns that are seized in Chicago were sold in Indiana. You go right, literally right across the border. And uh, somebody called up the other day onto this program to say, no, no, that's not true. And I got literally dozens of emails, text messages, tweets from people saying, or not text messages, tweets from people saying, I live in Indiana. Here's the names of the gun stores. In fact, one guy sent me a Google map, 15 gun stores right along the Indi- right along the Illinois border. You, you know, the, yeah, you want to get guns out of the hands of criminals? Let's start Look. licensing guns. Let's start insuring guns. Let's start registering guns. But let's stop you know, selling guns to anybody who wants to just walk into a gun store in Indiana just because they're illegal in Chicago. Carlos, you know, give me an argument that works.